subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. The latest vaccine developments have been from the University of Oxford vaccine over the past few days and it's all seemingly good news. The past couple of days was speculation about some positive findings that are due to come out on Monday in the journal Lancet from vaccine trials and now we hear that the Jenner Institute, which is one of the institutes collaborating on developing the Oxford vaccine, is considering adopting human challenge trials, which is where participants are directly exposed on purpose to the virus to expedite these vaccine trials. In this episode, we're going to discuss about the Oxford vaccine, about human challenge trials, how they've been used in the past, and what the issues are with using them for COVID. My name is Sandhya Ramesh and this is Pure Science. The Oxford vaccine, officially called the CHAD OX1 and COV-19, it's a mouthful. It is a viral vector vaccine which uses a common cold causing virus. This virus is an adenovirus that causes common colds in chimpanzees. And it has been genetically modified with a gene missing. So while it is being used in the vaccine, it cannot infect human bodies. To protect against COVID-19, the spike protein of the SARS-CoV-2 virus has been inserted into the chimp adenovirus and is being used in this vaccine. The vaccine is currently undergoing a combined phase two, phase three trials in UK and then also phase three trials in Brazil, in South Africa. It also underwent phase one safety testing and the data for which is to be released on Monday. But phase two and phase three trials began based on established safety of this virus from past work with adenoviruses. Now, we've seen multiple times before that vaccine development is a long and laborious process. After the establishment of safety in preclinical and phase one studies, there is the establishment of efficacy, which takes a very long time. Safety is first established over a few months where participants are given vaccines one after the other because it's a question of safety. And then once safety is established, Participants in phase two and phase three trials, which typically enroll a few hundreds to a few thousands of people, are first given the vaccine and then are monitored and followed up with to see if they contract the disease. Because pathogens can have dangerous effects on the body and because we know even less about novel pathogens such as this novel coronavirus, it is not standard practice to infect humans directly with the pathogen on purpose to test the efficacy of a drug or vaccine. It is considered unethical. And in normal trials where researchers wait for people to contract the infection or not, the trials are made even harder by physical distancing measures that are adopted by people worldwide, making it harder for trial participants to contract the virus as well. This is why standard vaccine development takes 10 to 15 years. And with even skipping multiple steps, we expect COVID vaccine to be rolled out maybe in the next one to two years in the best case scenario. This intensively long time period can somewhat be mitigated by enrolling a large number of people into ongoing vaccine trials, such as how the Oxford vaccine has done for phase two and phase three, where it has enrolled over 10,000 participants. But the process still takes time. Human challenge trials or HCTs as they are known, on the other hand, can greatly speed up the process. Under extremely precautious laboratory conditions, very controlled, with measured viral loads and a whole host of other restrictions, the participants who are young, healthy adults without pre-existing conditions and have developed antibodies since vaccination are exposed to the virus. This removes the wait for a real-world situation to play out and to directly tell us whether the vaccine works or not. Using human challenge trials means that researchers also have to enroll only fewer participants and monitor for less time producing results faster. Many virologists, immunologists, ethicists and other experts have asked for replacing phase 3 trials with HCT. Supporters of HCT do not discount risks associated with human studies. 
everyone acknowledges that there is a theoretical risk of developing a serious disease and also maybe death. But experts argue that with these studies, even such unfortunate disadvantages and outcome would be worth it because they would lead to reduction in the global burden of the disease and save millions of lives. Humans have been experimented on since the beginning of medicine. But after the Nazi regime's unlawful and unethical experiments on humans, the Nuremberg Code was instituted in 1946, which consisted of principles of an ethical framework for research involving humans. This is what we follow even today. These principles put extreme restrictions on risks involved, even if participants have been informed of these risks and have provided informed consent. It also mandates autonomy of participants, which means they can even drop out at any point in the trial midway if they want, and it stresses on extremely high value to be derived from such human studies. We have been conducting human studies regularly, so far with no serious negative effects, because such trials are designed with the farthest extreme levels of safety. Human challenge trials introduce risks, but most experts believe that it also removes risk because participants are scanned so thoroughly and regularly. But it is still a new virus and you can never say with complete certainty that there is zero chance of developing a severe illness or worse. And therefore, even volunteers who have ethically given their informed consent should be monitored fully and closely and should they contract an infection, be given the best possible care. Human challenge trials are not without precedent. The very first vaccine, which is the smallpox vaccine that was developed by Edward Jenner in 1796, was conceptualized and tested by inoculating people with material from the pus or wound of an infected person. And there too, safety was demonstrated. Jenner did not start off with using smallpox inoculation. He used inoculation from people suffering from cowpox. Cowpox belonged to the same family, so humans produced antibodies to it as the smallpox virus, but it caused a mild non-threatening illness in humans. Human challenge trials have contributed to the efforts of development of vaccines for yellow fever, influenza, typhoid, cholera, and even malaria, which is ongoing, with no real risks or dangers so far because these vaccines are extremely safe. They are tested for safety on many different animals before being administered to humans. Experts have said that the risk of contracting the disease and developing a serious condition in a human challenge trial is equivalent to the risks you would face when donating a kidney. There is a real risk that in human challenge trials, if things go wrong, it would further exacerbate and fuel the rising anti-vaccine sentiment that we see around us these days. And the WHO has also warned of this. Additionally, some other diseases for which we've tried HCT have been treatable, but COVID-19 still is not. However, ethicists agree that it's in precisely situations like this where we need HCTs more than ever. Many experts have issued guidelines to conduct proper HCTs ethically for COVID-19, including the WHO. The WHO released their guidelines for human challenge trials back in May, which is what the Oxford Vaccine Group would have to follow. Additionally, over 125 academics, doctors, epidemiologists, scientists and professors, including 15 Nobel laureates, have also written an open letter asking for human challenge trials to address the urgent need for a vaccine to curb this ongoing pandemic. And Professor Adrian Hill, who is the director of the Jenner Institute, which is working on the vaccine, has said that they indeed are considering human trials. He, in fact, said that in the very best case scenario, we could potentially have a vaccine rolled out by October. And all of this is good news. In the larger worst case scenario with human challenge trials, the trials would take just as long as non-human trials. But in the best case, we could have a functioning vaccine within just a mere few weeks.